You're listening to Your Ultimate Life with Kellen Flukiger, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hey there, you know what I love about that dude that announces me every week? He says my name right every time. Kellen Flukiger. It's so funny. I've lived my whole life with people either not saying my last name or trying very delicately to ask how you say it. And every week that dude says your ultimate life with Kellen Flukiger. So that's so much fun. I have a fun background today and I'm even color coordinated. You know, I have a brown shirt with this brown background. So let me tell you what that background is. That background is a city skyline. And I want you to look at it. And if you're just listening to this, boy, you're missing out today. Because I'm going to do a contrast here. That background is beautiful. But do you know what it started out as? That background started out not looking like that at all. That background started out looking like this. Now, how boring and drab. I'm going to get this out of the way. I'll talk about it later, but that, how boring. It's a, it's a nice city skyline, right? And there's, somebody asked me today, one of my coaching clients, what city is that? And thinking it was a, you know, big city, and it's, it is Edmonton, Alberta, but it's not a big, important city in terms of the world stage and everything. It's important for me because I live there. But I took that and I turned it into that. And here, here's the thing. That transformation or the change of the background from one thing to to this, that evokes a completely different image. The other one was a slightly overexposed, a little bit washed out picture that I took one day, and it happens that there's a river. There's a river that runs right through Edmonton, the North Saskatchewan River, and eventually it goes and joins the Missouri River, we're east of the Continental Divide, and so it em- empties into the Gulf of Mexico eventually. But the North Saskatchewan River runs right through town. And because uh, of the river, there's a, the whole area all the way through town called the River Valley. And Edmonton has done a magnificent job developing the River Valley. You know, lots and lots of parks and walking trails and bikes. In fact, Joy tells me, you know, my wife and business partner, she's been on here several times with me, and she'll be on again, just not today. She tells me that Edmonton has more parks than any city in the world, except Paris, France. Obviously. Well, not Paris, Idaho. Paris, France. But anyway, they've done a great job developing the River Valley, and it's beautiful. So what does that have to do with this picture? Well, the river is right in between where I am and the buildings. I'm on one side of the river, and that is the other side. And so there's some places here on this side of the river where you can look across and see this really beautiful skyline. And it was just, I took a picture one day, and it was that other one that I showed you, kind of drab, a little bit overexposed and not that exciting. And then I was playing around with it in one of the editing programs and turned this up. And that was a transformation. Now, this could be a postcard. It could be from the future. It could be, you know, nostalgic of something in the past, like that kind of color scheme. It could feel like almost like Blade Runner, except it's not dark enough. And, you know, the transformation. Here's the interesting thing I want to talk about today. Transformation is a state change. Like if I am upset... And then I get happy. That's a transformation. If I am broke and I'm just like scrounging for dough, there's a and then I get wealthy or I get to be where I'm, you know, pretty good. That's a transformation. Now in the coaching business, which you guys know I'm in, because I talk about your ultimate life all the time, it is really the transformation business. One of the things clients call me is the alchemist, the alchemist. And some of them just say, you are alchemy. And so I've adopted that, and one of the things in my def- definition statement, and I have one about my business, is I am alchemy, lover of people, healer of souls, magnifier of prosperity. Each of those is a transformation, a change from one state to the other. Now, I lived most of my life thinking that those kind of transformations were haphazard, that stuff just happened somehow, somewhere. And if I was lucky enough to be around for it, wow, it was my good day. 
Kind of like winning the lottery. But short of winning the lottery, I was really not going to have much of a, you know, I was really not going to have much of a thing happen for me. It was out of my control, and it was just kind of, I don't know, luck of the draw. Now, what I've learned is that's not true. Just like I took this photo and made a transformation into something exciting. Every single person I use, and I am on the Zoom with a lot of people, you know, several new people every week. And uh, since the pandemic, it's just hundreds and hundreds of new people I've met on Zoom and Lunch Club and other things. Every single one of them I use this background on says something about it. Wow, what is that? Where'd you get the picture? Blah, blah, blah. And it's almost a deflating thing to say, well, it's just a plain old picture. I show them the other one and then show them this one. And they think I'm some kind of a wizard. I'm not. I just know how to manipulate. I don't even remember what program I did this in. But it was not complicated, but it was a big transformation. So here's the point. That change from the other picture to this one, the overexposed photo to this sort of uh, powerful, emotive image is 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 real it happened and the the reality is it brings out other emotions in you it makes you feel different things think about maybe movies or scenes or other things you've seen or books you've read or you know a alien city or something on a different planet where they have people like beings also right what is the last transformation you had that was remarkable that was so interesting People said something to you. Now, let's give some examples. If someone hasn't seen you for a while and you lose uh, a bunch of weight, 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds, somebody sees you, then they'll say, ooh, you look good. You've had a transformation, right? What did you do? How did you do that? Why? Why do they ask those questions? Maybe, they're, maybe they have a weight issue and maybe they don't, but they're still curious. What is it that gave you the power to create this transformation, this remarkable change that's in a good and significant way. Now, transformations aren't always good. Back in the years before I started coaching in my uh, 30-year career, when I was, you know, had a lot of struggles and stuff like that, I I had an acquaintance of a fellow uh, during part of my years during that time, and then I saw him again several years later, and I looked a lot worse. (laughs) I'd gained 20 or 30 pounds, and my uh, habits, my addiction habits were taking a toll and so forth. So his comment was, whoa, what happened to you? So that was a transformation in a negative direction. So here's the point of all this and what I want to dive into today. Transformations are not accidents. Sometimes a sudden thing happens. You get in a wreck and you lose an arm. Okay, I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about transformations that you want or that you don't want, they're not accidents. My transformation to being in a lot worse shape and looking, you know, the ravages of a profligate lifestyle, that was not an accident. It didn't happen all at once, but it was my choice to continue down that road of that kind of behavior and not to do anything about it. When that all changed in 2007, I haven't seen that person since since that but now the transformation is back it's way bigger than the other one if you knew me uh, 20 years ago before 2007 when this all started changing you wouldn't recognize the same person i'm not the same person at all been a massive transformation in a good direction so i want you to think about your transformations what is the last transformation you had that was significant money. Maybe you made a lot of money. Maybe you lost a lot of money. I don't know, but maybe you made a lot of money. Maybe you changed your health. Those are important transformations, but they are all dependent on the the transformation that launches everything. And you know what that is? The transformation that launches everything is your internal game. Your internal game, the stories about how you, what you believe about yourself, about Now, who you think you are, who you think you are, those transformations are the ones that are most important. And I'll tell you why. Because they lead to everything else. They lead you to transformations on the outside. So my health, back from, you know, when I had all those struggles, 
to, to today, there's been a huge transformation. But it wasn't the external things that drove that transformation. It was the internal game. I began to love myself. I began to realize there was more. I had missed opportunities. I began to make commitments and keep them. I began to do something different inside. And then the manifestation of that was outside. That was easy. There's a, <clears throat> there's a story, I think it's by Nathaniel Hawthorne, called The Portrait of Dorian Gray. And that is a story of a hidden transformation, the inside and the outside game. It's written as a horror story, and it's about a a rich guy. I think it was in the 1800s, and he lived a very riotous lifestyle. But he had a magical picture, a magical portrait that hung on his wall in the house, and it was a very large portrait. And he, if, I, don't, I don't remember the story of the magic or whatever, but the magic worked like all the stuff that should have showed on him, wrinkles and sleepless nights and all the, you know, the, the wreck of his face and his life, it all showed up in the picture and not him, right? But it was still there. It was real. And then the horror part of the story is, I think toward the end, the house caught on fire or something and the picture burned. So then all of a sudden, he became haggard and old. That is a, a, a kind of a story of a hidden transformation. So why am I talking about this today? Well, I want you to think about what is a transformation that was last. And I want, to think, I want you to think about an answer for yourself right now. What is a transformation you want? Like, what is it? September, October, November, December. It's three months and some change till Christmas or till New Year's, almost four months till New Year's. What do you want as a transformation for the holidays? What do you want? And that's not a rhetorical question. I know what I'm doing. I have several things happening. I have a book launch in about three weeks. And I'll talk more about that in the weeks that come up. But this book is called Living with Purpose and Power. And do you know what it's about? It's about creating transformations in your life and helping with transformation in the lives of others. Now, the reason I wrote this book is because of the tremendous transformation that's happened to me, you know, changing from struggling with depression, attempted suicide, drug addict, and a bunch of other stuff to where I'm happy every day and I'm living that ultimate life, purpose, prosperity, and joy every minute. So what I want and what I'm doing now with my work, my road to 50 million and all the things I've talked about is sharing that information because I want to help every single person who wants to to change to be able to do that. Now, you know how hard it is to talk somebody into something that doesn't want to. There's a phrase that says, a person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. Now, that's a a little rhyme, but it means you can't really make anybody do anything. So those that want transformation, it is available. And that's why I ask you, what is the transformation you want? Do you want to have... $25,000 more than you have right now or than you see you're going to get before the end of the year. Three months, three and a half months. Do you want that? I'm not saying you should or you shouldn't. Maybe you want that. Do you want to have found a person that is the love of your life? Do you want to have a better job? Do you want to have a book written? Do you want to change how you feel about yourself? I was just listening to a video in a Facebook group that I belonged to earlier today, and I didn't listen to all of it, but it was done by a good friend of mine who's also a coach, and he talked about the adventure that he's on. He's in Tokyo right now, and he's building a house. He's having a house built in Vancouver. Now, he's originally, I think, from Vancouver, but I think his wife's from uh, from Japan, and I hope I don't get this wrong, all wrong if he's listening or watches this later, but if you know who you are. But anyway... <clears throat> So he was, he'd been back and forth several times and they made a decision just to just create an adventure and to go to Japan for a year while this house, this new house they're building is being built and it's taking longer than they thought. And so he, and he, he, here's a whole bunch of transformations. He created an opportunity to go live 
in this other country and have the experience. And he's got a couple of kids. And so he talked about how excited it, how excited he was to provide that experience. He also talked about how many things were uncertain and how miraculously these things fell into place. Well, they weren't miraculous. And this is why this matters for transformation. He has created himself as a person who solves problems, as a person to whom solutions can come, as a person who lives by intuition and inspiration. He wasn't born lucky. In fact, if you hear him tell his story, it was quite the opposite. He struggled quite a bit to get to that place. Well, his story resonates so much with me because that's the same as me. I wasn't born confident or capable or able to speak or be an author or any of that stuff. It's stuff that I learned how to do during a transformation or because of a transformation. So transformations aren't luck. I want you to identify a transformation you want in 90 days. I picked 90 days because the end of the year is 90 days, but also 90 days is something we can get our hands on, right? Two years, five years, that's too far away and tomorrow is too soon. 90 days. What do you want different in your life? What do you want transformed or changed? Radically different, like this picture, like it was to like this, that creates an entirely different image and feeling in your life. So let's talk about how to do that. There's a thing in us that keeps us stuck or drawn to where we are. There are lots of parts to it, but one thing is habits, and another thing is beliefs. So I'd like to talk for a minute, or for a little bit, in this episode about the role that habits play in keeping you where you are, or allowing you to create transformation. And I want to talk about what beliefs do to keep you exactly where you are, stuck, stuck if you're not happy, stuck where you are or that allow you to create transformation. Now, habits, they're not very exciting. They're things that we've learned to do over and over, right? You might drive the same way to work. Uh, I haven't shaved for a little while, but when I shave, maybe you, if you shave, you do it in a certain pattern, whether it's your face, your legs, or something else. We do things by habit over and over and over again. Now, that's a good thing. I think I read that 85 to 90% of all of our actions in a given day or week are happened by habit. They're just habits that we have. That's a good thing. But here's the truth. Habits are great servants, but they're terrible masters. How many habits do you have that are serving untransformation? How many habits do you have that are keeping you stuck where you are, that are keeping you unhappy, that are keeping you fearful, that are keeping you blocked. You know, in the coaching world, we say getting in our own way. It's as if there were two or three of us, and two of us are blocking progress. I was watching one of the episodes of the uh, movies Pirates of the Caribbean uh, the other night, and Johnny Depp, of course, is Captain Sparrow. And in one, I think it's number three, he's dead. And he's in the land of dead. And he's alone, except he's on a ship. And the entire crew is just more versions of himself. So he would yell at the crew to go do this, and it was a bunch of Johnny Depps that went and did the thing or moved up the sails or you know did whatever the work was to be done. It reminded me of how the literal it is when we get in our own way. Now, how can habits get in your way? Well, here's a real silly but very obvious example when your alarm clock goes off, do you hit snooze, the snooze button five times, or do you get up? What are the reasons? What are the excuses that you have to hit snooze five times? So why do you set the alarm? If you have a habit of just hitting it a bunch of times and telling yourself a story about it doesn't matter, why do you even set it? That would be an interesting question for some inquiry. And if you're working with a coach, you should be asking that question. Why am I doing that? Why am I pretending I'm going to get up at X o'clock and then I don't regularly, if that's a habit? Because when I hit the snooze button three or four or five times, 30, 40, 50 minutes, what I'm really saying is, well, I can take a shortcut to work. It won't matter that much if I'm late. I'll cut out my exercise. I don't really need to do this and such. And what it means is we have 
effectively deceived ourselves or even lied to ourselves about what's important. Because when we went to bed and set the alarm, it was like, I'm going to do this. And you might even have said, I'm going to do this. And then in the morning, oh, I'm too tired. And if that happens over and over again, it's easy to see how that kind of a habit gets in your way. Okay, and it's easy to see um, what it means to get in your own way. Like in that scene, it's like two or three of you is holding you in bed while one tiny version of you is in the corner going, come on, you said you were going to be on time to work today. And two or three of you, the big versions, are holding you down because you're tired. So those kind of, and that's a silly one, but those kind of habits get in your way. Another habit that gets in your way is your eating. I don't know about you, but I know lots of people who are not healthy. They're overweight. Their aerobic capacity is not good. They don't exercise. They're sedentary. They do, you know, they do all those habits that keep them stuck where they are. Well, those are the opposite of transformation. So we're going to talk about how to change that in a minute. But obviously, we got to get rid of those habits. How do you do that? Because habits, yeah, they're, you know, they're habits. They're our default mechanism. They're how we act automatically, and they are strong and powerful. So we need a tool and a process to get rid of those, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So the second thing are these beliefs. Beliefs are also kind of like habits. Let me give you an example of one that I used to have uh, that was really a problem for me. I used to believe, my, my upbringing for my, the first 17, 18 years of my life was quite um, violent. Uh, a lot of physical punishment that today would be felony child abuse. So I learned to live fearfully. I learned to be afraid. I learned to lie a lot to protect myself. No surprise there. But what I learned more than those things was there's something wrong with me. I am a failure. I'm not good enough. I even gave it an acronym. The NGE problem. Not good enough. And it showed up in all kinds of things. It showed up when I didn't go try something because I was afraid I would fail. It showed up when I did try something but only half-heartedly because I was afraid I would fail. It showed up in procrastination because a big thing I used to do is procrastinate and then do stuff fast at the last minute and hurry and try to do good but, you know, knowing that I had procrastinated too long. And then behind the scenes, the excuse was, well, I really didn't have time to do my best work. So if somebody's critical or it isn't perfect, you know, I didn't have that much time. It's not that big of a deal. And if I'd had a little bit more time, well, whose fault was it that I didn't have any time? Mine. Mine. I created that problem. Now, there's something else. I want you to think about, I want you to think about what are your habits that are serving you? Because here's the truth. Habits make great servants. If I had to think about pumping blood, digesting food and all the rest of the things, you know, we'd never get anything done. So habits make great servants, but they make terrible masters. Beliefs can be the same thing. Beliefs can be just as nefarious and just as damaging and in getting in your way and preventing you from, from the transformation you might want. Now, this whole talk today is only going to be useful to you if there's something you want to change, if you want to move somewhere. We've got a plan next summer to move over to Vancouver Island. We're in Edmonton right now, this city here. We're going to move over to Vancouver Island. Why? We're tired of the winter, and so we made a plan to do that. Now, here's the thing. We've been in Edmonton for many years, and I think seven. It's not way many, but, you know, it'll be eight by by next summer. So I could allow the habits. Well, it's going to be too hard. Well, I'll have to get help in a truck. and Or, oh, it's going to be too expensive. Or I won't be able to find anything over there that I want, and I'll have to settle for something less. All of those things could be and have been in, in 
an earlier part of my life, habits and beliefs that got in the way. Now, because I'm a coach, I talk all the time, every day to several people, sometimes as many as seven or eight in a day, and sometimes only one or two. But we're always talking about, are you happy? What's going on that you love? And what do you want different? Those are questions that I ask even when I get to know new people. And it's not that I'm trying to sell them anything, but just my nature as a coach. And because I've been through this process of transformation to where I love my life every day. I'm happy. I get up early because I love it. I work on stuff all day. I do podcasts and I do this show and I do music. And I was dictating this morning several chapters in one of the audio books. I was talking about book releases. And I met uh, a new person today who's in England. It's in one of the Facebook groups. You know, all that sort of stuff is how I fill my day and I do it on purpose and I love it. So that's my life now. And because it is, I love asking people, how are you doing? Tell me about your life. Tell me about your business. Tell me about your kids. Tell me about what you're passionate about. And in, in, in my genuine interest, it's really easy to tell after 15 or 20 or maybe 30 minutes of talking to somebody if they're happy, if they're living a life like they want, if they really feel valued, loved, useful, capable, or somewhere else, if they feel unseen unheard, frightened, incapable, like they're going to fail. All those things carry energy. And we have habits about how we think. I'll give you another example. I have someone as a client right now, his habit for decades has been, even when things, when things go bad, he blames himself. I recognize that because I used to do that. When things go good, his habit is to downplay. Well, you know, it could have been better. Yeah, we, you know, we got pretty lucky. And by choosing, that's a choice, by choosing that way of relating to events, it gets in the way of really enjoying success. Worse yet, it gets in the way of creating success. Now, why would I say that? Well, here's what I know from all the studying that I've done and the coaching that I've done and the coaching I've received. When you have a positive belief, I, like the little engine that could, I think I can, I think I can, you are more creative. You're actually more intelligent. When you're angry or when you're frustrated or when you're afraid, we get stupider It gets in the way of our creativity. Our field of vision narrows, our thinking narrows, and we become less resourceful, less open to transformation, less open to making something good out of every situation. Now, here is the result of a big transformation for me. I used to have that whole depression thing going on because of the stuff that happened my life, and I lived with that for decades. The underlying belief that was holding me back, getting in my way, all those buzzwords, was that I wasn't good enough, that anything really good that happened was just sort of lucky, and I needed to be really careful because otherwise bad stuff was going to happen or people would find out, like imposter syndrome. People would find out that I'm really not not very good, that I've just been lucky, that I am getting by, that I'm not that smart or that I'm not that capable. I'll be exposed. That's how I lived. I was afraid. I sabotaged success regularly. I, I found the problem in everything and everything that went wrong, I blamed myself. Now, that's a really silly way to live, but it was what I did. And it came out of decades of depression. It wasn't true. It wasn't true for me, and it's not true for you. Now, I'm not saying those are your beliefs or your habits, but what I would like you to think about is what are they? How do you talk to yourself? Do you talk to yourself all day in dark colors or in color colors? Do you talk to yourself in negative tones? Do you chastise yourself? I can't tell you the number of people that I talk to that say, oh, when I ask them about their internal dialogue, they know right away what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm always yelling at myself. Oh, you stupid idiot. You shouldn't have done that. And they give me examples of the dialogue that goes on in their hearts and minds. 
How do you think that kind of dialogue plays into transformation, into getting to be more happy, in getting to be more wealthy, in being more creative and seeing opportunities? Let me give you an example of that. We live in a world today where it's easier to create a business and to make money than it's ever been. Now, we have all these things going around. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. There are no doubt crooks and, you know, frauds and people stealing from others and all kinds of that going on. I'm not saying any of that. This isn't a a moral or political debate. That's all true. Even with all that, it's easier today to make money than it's ever been in the world. Ever, 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 ever. What does that mean? That means that you have the opportunity to create any life you want more today than at any time in the past. And the reason is really simple. We have more technology, and technology can be good or bad. You can spend a lot of time wasting time surfing Facebook pages, or you can use technology to your benefit. But let me just use my business, for example, or businesses of clients that I have. Their business exists because of Zoom or Google Meet or the ability to send emails or the ability to create and use virtual or uh, information products and things like that. Now, that doesn't mean we still don't need physical products. But if you wanted to start a business right now, if you wanted to use one of the skills you have, something you love to do, I want you to think of something you love to do that you're not making money at right now. I'll bet you, I'll bet you $100 if we had a conversation, we could figure out a way to make money doing that thing you like to do. And people have taken me up on that, and I've never had a conversation where we couldn't find some way that it was really clear, I don't mean made up, that you could make a living. You could not only make money, but you could make a living doing whatever you love to do. Why? Well, you can reach anybody in the world. The internet goes all around the world. That wasn't even true, what, 30 years ago? This is all brand new. So our ability to do that is leveraged like crazy. That means that some of my coaching clients, people that I work with to create that transformation, the change of mindset and the change of habits, they live in Mexico. They live in the United States. They live in Europe. They live in Canada, too. But they live all over the world. I've got clients all over the place. Got them in Australia. Got them in Europe. I've got them in the U.S. I've got them in Mexico and in Canada and some other places I'm probably not thinking of right now. Wow. That could never have happened just not too long ago. So you can reach a larger audience. You can create things today you couldn't create. It would have taken a long time to create a picture like this not very long ago. I have a client right now who's a world-class artist. I mean world-class, just beautiful stuff. Now, he can paint with brushes. He loves to do digital painting, so he can painting with, paint with pads, drawing pads and stuff like that. Lately, he's been getting into this AI stuff, image generation, but he's not just... Okay, computer, create me some cool stuff. Oh, look at me, I'm an artist. No, none of that. He is so skilled at using all of those things as tools that he's able to make world-class art fast and well that is his own unique, powerful art. It is so exciting to watch that. Now... That ability is right now in this making of transformation. Like just a year ago, chat GPT, who'd ever heard of that? Today, the discussion about AI is all over the place. And, you know, it's funny because some people are fearful. AI is going to take all of our jobs and it's going to put all the copywriters out of work and all the script writers in Hollywood and all the music people and everything else. You know what? I've heard that song before. You know, when I heard it, I heard it in the 80s. Synthesizers, digital music and workstations and stuff, first started happening in the 70s and then 80s. And at that time, I heard all the studio musicians are going to be out of work. Synthesizers are going to replace everything else. Guess what? Didn't happen. The 
composers in Hollywood still do film scores. And yeah, some of them use synthesizers and some of them use other sounds. And, you know, it's just a tool integrated into the landscape. And so all that doomsaying didn't take place. It's not going to take place now either. Writers are still necessary. Creatives are still necessary. The tools are getting better and better. And that means we can do stuff faster. We can research more. Think of it this way. Chat GPT, all it is is bringing the library home. A hundred years ago, you could, didn't have that many people didn't have access to a library. Then the library came to town. Wow. And all of a sudden, all that information was right there available if you just went and checked it out and read the book. Then we got it online. And then we got Google where we could look stuff up from home. And now we have ChatGPT. All it is is bigger and faster and closer libraries. It isn't going to create anything unless you do. So there's that transformation thing again. If you're carrying an idea that says you can't do what you want to do, it's too late, it's too hard, you don't have time, you don't know how, I challenge you. I call you out straight up right here, right now. Garbage. There's nothing that you cannot do if you want it badly enough. I have that conversation so often with people that I, I get introduced to. Their clients are not clients. And our first thing I ask is, what do you want? Not first, but after we talk a little, what do you want that you don't have? What is the hardest thing you want that you don't have? Happen today. So I was having a conversation with a beautiful uh, lady. She was in England. I met her in a Facebook group. And so we set up a time to talk, get to know each other. And I ask the same questions I always do. First thing I ask, well, what do you want for Christmas? You know, meaning it's about three months away. What are you going to create for yourself? And she listed, you know, a couple things. Well, I like to do this and that. And then there was a pause. And then her eyes lit up and she said, you know what I really want? And then she told me what she really wanted. And it was different. And it might have been in the realm of, I don't know if I can do that because it involved, you know, moving from England to somewhere in the States and involved quite a bit of money and a bunch of stuff like that. So it's funny because the question, what do you want, at first was a small answer. That's getting in your own way. That is those uh, Captain Sparrow holding him down. You can't do that. That's the small version or the big versions of you holding you in place. There is no reason you can't have that outrageous dream. How dare you insult your creativity, your capability, by believing you can't? That's not true. My, my business, my business is built on helping people do impossible stuff. Figure out a way. I've got a three-part saying that I do. I help you. Create your future, however miraculous the work may appear. We co-create a vision so we have a really clear picture of the transformation that we want. And then we build a path. What would the path look like from here to there? What would have to happen to build the road, the path from here to there? And then we activate those resources. And there's nothing that can't be achieved in that, in that process. And if you believe there is, that's just a habit. It's just a story. It's just you or me, if I do that, getting in my way. I used to believe lots of harmful, negative things that were like bricks holding me back and holding me down. The work of transformation has helped me eliminate the barriers of a depression, the barriers of self-sabotage, the barriers of being uh, an imposter, of being constantly found out, of pretending I'm someone I'm not, of hiding things, the barriers of skeletons in the closet. The bar- all those barriers that I had in my mind are gone. Some of them were only in my mind. Some of them were real habits. Like I did have a habit from my youth of telling lies. 
misleading, leaving out things, because I thought it was better to manipulate the truth. And that was a hard habit to break, because I had to come to terms with, I don't care what somebody thinks, this is the truth of the situation, and we're just going to work with that, whatever we do, regardless. So each of those areas, and there are many more, are the area of focus and transformation. What are yours? I want you to think of a big, hairy, outrageous goal or a small goal, but one that you haven't had yet, preferably one that you've told yourself stories about. I want to write a book. Oh, I could never write a book. Who would read it if I did? Oh, I want to move to Texas, New York, California. Oh, but I'll never be able to do it. I'm stuck in my job. I want to improve the relationship I have. We fell out of love with each other a long time ago, and now we're just toughing it out. I want to have a loving, meaningful, good relationship, and I just can't. It's too late. Well, the desire to have is an expression of transformation. It's an expression of wanting to go from where you are right now closer to that ultimate life, a life of purpose, prosperity, and joy. If you describe right now what your ultimate life looks like, can you do it? When I ask people that, usually the first answer, well, I can have freedom, I can do whatever I want. Oh, okay, how does that happen? Oh, I have all the money I want, all the time I want. And when we dig down into it, it, what would you do with that? I don't know. I just go everywhere and, you know, it's silly sounding answers. When we talk about it for a while, you know what usually, you know, people usually get to? Well, I would really love to create some relationships with my family. I really want to repair this thing that happened 10 years ago. I really would like to do some traveling that I haven't been able to do. And often, Often, more often, you'd be surprised. You know, I really love helping in the community. I love the youth. I, I, I'm active a little bit in my church, but I, I would love to do that more. Or, I, you know, I really love helping people uh, with affordable housing. I talked to somebody new the other day that their whole um, passion is around creating mechanisms to both finance and build affordable housing, public-private partnerships and you know, different kinds of programs where we could end, in their mind, homeless crisis. That's their passion. Well, you know what? I know something about you. You have a passion. If you're watching The Ultimate Life show and you've listened to this station or my other podcast, that's because you want to live a life of purpose, prosperity, and joy. So I have a deal for you. Either you're already living where you're happy every minute of your, of your day, and you live in a state of perpetual, joyful transformation, or you don't have that. If you have it, if you're living a life where you're really happy every day, you wake up excited, and everything that's on your plate is just what you want to do. If you're living like that, I want to talk to you, because one of my commitments is to share your story to share stories of transformation. Because I can tell you, if you live in that beautiful place where you're happy every day, you didn't fall up that mountain. You didn't get there accidentally. It didn't come in an Amazon box. It's something you created intentionally. And what I know from my work as a coach is sharing those stories of creation are powerful. That is a powerful process because whenever we share our journey through the mud, through the struggles, through the habits and changes and beliefs. And when we share those, we, we get powerful. Um, we feel good. It builds us up to share. But more importantly, it lifts and blesses others because people hear what you've been through and they say, huh, if they can do that, maybe I can. I know I've said that as I've heard those stories hundreds of times. And I've heard hundreds of those stories. I'd like to hear yours. So that was the first invitation. If you're living the ultimate life, purpose, prosperity, and joy, where you're excited about every day, I want to talk to you. I want to know you. I want to share your story. I have lots of platforms to share them on. I have a podcast and I'd love you to be a guest. Why? Because I want to share your story. I want to share the encouragement that you offer the changes you've made, the learnings that have come to you, 
the growth that has happened in your own life, the joy that you now feel moving from someplace sucky to someplace powerful. So that's group one. You're, you're living that way. Group two is you're not. And I say all these words and you either think he, you're f- telling you're full of crap. That's impossible. Or you think, Maybe somebody can do it, but I can't. I'm not able to do that. Too late, don't have time, not my season, don't have support, don't have any money, you know, all of the standard reasons, and there's a few more. That's the second group of people that I want to talk to. Because if you're living with that burden, I can't create transformation. I can't create changes in my life. I can't create the wealth I need. I can't create the happiness I need. I can't get out of debt or get away from my bad habits or whatever it is. If that's the pain, the burden, the rocks that you're living under, then my assignment that I've given myself, because I love you, is to help with that. Because I used to live there. I used to live under a giant pile of rubble and rocks, firm in the belief that I sucked and that any good fortune wasn't coming to me and that it all belonged to somebody else. Now, I've personally gone through massive transformation to get to where I am today, loving every minute of life. And it wasn't an accident and it didn't happen out of the sky or in an Amazon box. It happened as a result of process. It happened as a result of transformation, just like I turned the city picture completely different through a process. Here's the truth that I've learned, and I'm giving it to you, and I'm pleading with you to believe it and use it. You can have whatever you want. You can change your life from where you are right now to being fully and completely happy, delightfully happy every day. That's really possible, but it won't happen by itself. It won't do itself, and no one is certainly going to come and do it for you. That's like making your arms strong. If you want your arms strong and you want to be able to do 100 push-ups, you got to do them. Nobody can do them for you, no matter how many books you read and videos you watch. But the good news is it's possible. You can have purpose in your life. You can have all the prosperity you want, even in these weird times. And you can have absolute perpetual joy every day. Now, if you think I'm full of crap, I'd love to talk with you. If you are hearing that and you're yearning and say, man, I want that, I'd love to talk with you because that's the work. That's my road to 50 million. And my year ends October 14th right quick. So I'll be making some announcements about the book launch, as I said, about new goals for next year, when the 50 million project is over and all kinds of good stuff. But at the core, it's all about service. It's all about taking the good things that I've discovered and been blessed with, the tools and the process of transformation, changing something from a struggle to a victory, from being hopeless to, to powerful and winning from despair to rejoicing. That is possible. And it's the reason I love this work so much is because there's nothing like that feeling. So on the screen, uh, this is one way, because I have a funny name, Kellen Flukiger, why I'm pretty easy to find. But there, www.ultimatelifechallenge.com. If you're curious about how to do this kind of work, if you're curious about creating your own miracles, creating your own wealth, creating your own prosperity, joy, excitement, I have a challenge. It's called the Ultimate Life Challenge. And it's really about how to get clear on what to do, how to have the confidence to do it, and then how to make it happen in your life. I have committed the rest of my days, every day I draw breath, to being involved in this work of transformation. For anyone who's seeking, now the last thing I'm trying to do is trying to go make somebody do whatever they don't want to do. That's not it. But if you're yearning to have, be, and do more than you are, to have happiness and joy and purpose and create miracles, you can have it. 
I'd love to help you if I can. I've got books. You can look my name up on Amazon. But the message here is your habits have got to change because the ones you've got have got you where you are now. The work that we do is identifying those habits and figuring out the change process. The beliefs you have about your situation, about yourself, we've got to identify the ones that are lead weights and get rid of them and create new ones that are like jet engines to launch you to the future, to joy, to happiness, eliminating the baggage of the past. No matter where you've been, no matter what's happened before, today is day one. I invite you to reach out. Let's have a conversation. I'd love to learn about you, to learn who you are, what you do, what you love, what you're yearning for, and how you can take the stuff that we've talked about today and move forward and create your ultimate life. You're listening to Your Ultimate Life with Kellen Flukiger, only on LA Talk Radio.